Hi, good afternoon, good afternoon everyone. My name's Anthony. I'm the CEO at Eagle Genomics. And this is Alexander Fleming, who famously, just over 100 years ago, discovered the first antibiotic action. Of course, quite by accident, he went away on holiday, and when he returned, he discovered that a Petri dish where he'd been cultivating bacteria had been colonized by bread mold, and that bread mold had killed the bacteria. Of course, that discovery profoundly changed healthcare and our understanding of illness in the 20th century. And uh, it, it has, of course, no doubt saved millions of lives. But in the 21st century, biology, and particularly microbiology, is no longer about growing things and cultivating things in the Petri dish. Uh, biology and microbiology is a data science. Now, of course, one other thing to say about uh, Alexander Fleming, he, along with Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur, are largely responsible for the way we think uh, about illness and health. Our understanding of illness and health has been shaped by what they call the germ theory of disease. Germs are the enemy, the immune system is the defense mechanism, the immune system there is, to kill, is there to kill the germs. I want to come back to that later on in the presentation because I think, finally, the context for our understanding of illness is changing in a very important way. But if biology in the 21st century is a data science, then we need to equip scientists to conduct that data science in a much more productive way than is currently possible. At Eagle Genomics, we've produced a platform, we've developed a software platform called the Automated Data Scientists that enables research at scale, putting data and data science at the fingertips of biology to radically improve the productivity of life sciences uh, R&D, uh, enabling collaboration at scale, experimental data analysis, and dry data experimentation in a way that's not heretofore been practicable. This is a bold undertaking, and of course, uh, it's not an undertaking we take lightly. Uh, it requires massive scale compute and state of the industry AI. And we as a life sciences software company need to partner in order to deliver this. And we're partnering with Microsoft, the platform, the automated data scientists in the Azure cloud, powered by Microsoft Cognitive Services, Microsoft's AI as a service capability, is enabling this life science revolution. It is a revolution. It's not just about digital transformation. This is the digital reinvention of life sciences R&D. That's a market that McKinsey described as a $100 billion market over the next 10 years. It's not a future. It's happening now. And it's happening in a very interesting way. And our customers are driving towards a type of microbiology, a type of biology that I think is going to radically uh, shift our view of what it is to be healthy and what it is to be sick in the future. And that's the microbiome. Just a show of hands quickly, does everyone know what the microbiome is? Half the audience. So the microbiome is the ecology of bacterial, fungal, viral, and other organisms uh, that makes up the lion's share of the biomass on Earth. But because it's invisible to us, we just largely ignored it uh, throughout most of our scientific endeavor. It's the ecology of bacterial, fungal organisms that cohabits with the human host. It's the bioreactor in your gut transforming your food into the substances you need to survive and thrive. It's tuning your immune system. It's the barrier layer between your skin and the environment. And we've systematically ignored it, but actually worse, been systematically destroying it over the course of the last 50 years because of our uh, health and wellness regimes. This understanding and the revealing of the secrets of the microbiome is already having a profound impact on industry. We're focusing on selling our platform to large-scale R&D teams in the personal care, wellness, and food industries, and uh, in the cosmetics and cosmeceutical space. And this is just a small number of our customers. Procter & Gamble are using our platform to catalog and explore their skin biology assets. Unilever have recorded the first use of a microbiome-orientated scientific claim to launch a new toothpaste product, Zendium, which radically outperforms any other toothpaste in the market by protecting the oral microbiome. We're also now working with Unilever to enable a next generation of track and trace technology, tracking bacterial contaminants in food based on the genomic footprint of those uh, contaminants. According to Peter Gallagher, executive vice president and global head of R&D at Unilever, if we could provide an early warning system based on this technology, that would tell him he was in danger of having to shut down a factory. That's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Kimberly Clark, 
one of the leading manufacturers of uh, nappies and feminine pads, is looking at the genital microbiome. There's been a correlation between genital microbiome dysbiosis and preterm birth, for instance, and potentially much more sinister illnesses. So this is a very, very significant area of research. Reckitt Benkiza are looking at replacing some of the more active ingredients in their cleaning products with botanicals in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. Just a small journey through some of these leading industries and why this is so important. In the cosmetics industry, the number one marketing theme in 2018 is microbiome. Skin companies, skin cream companies, developing their formulations based on whether they support or damage the skin microbiome. In the food industry, I talked about that next generation track and traced. Bluebell ice cream in Texas, over the last couple of years, have been battling to eradicate bacteria from their ice cream production lines and failing, with the result that uh, listeria contamination uh, from their product has caused significant consumer harm and damage, resulting in the withdrawal of all of the stock from the shelves in Walmart across the entire US. Contrast that with what Arla Foods are doing. Arla Foods are actively re-engineering cheese cultures, introducing new bacteria into the ecology of their cheese cultures to protect against listeria outbreaks. I mentioned Kimberly Clark. A range of these customers looking at uh, uh, applications in the personal care space. All of this is happening right now, and the application, the product, is being uh, deployed in a range of these large-scale customers. But we're only just getting going. We want to attack a far more significant problem. We want to solve illness. If the microbiome is the most recently discovered human organ, albeit a virtual organ, we can't understand health and wellness without understanding how we interact and interoperate with the microbiome. In the last 50 years, incidences of infectious diseases in the Western economies have plummeted, due in part, of course, to the introduction of antibiotics due to improved health and wellness uh, regimes. But at the same time, in just two generations, incidents of non-communicable disease, inflammatory disease, obesity, mumps, uh, uh, sorry, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, asthma, potentially even autism, psychological affective disorders have radically escalated. What's happened in just two generations, genetic variation cannot explain the challenge we're facing here. But the hygiene hypothesis suggests that uh, we're de de depriving our organisms of the microbial ecologies tuning and stimulating our immune system as a function of which we're becoming profoundly sick. We want to get beyond the hygiene hypothesis in this journey from the germ theory of disease through the hygiene hypothesis to really understanding what's going on and hopefully with our partners to the challenge of solving illness. In that endeavor, we think we're going to make a big difference and we're very much excited about it. Thank you for your time today.